husband and wife, Lou and Adele Barlow, present Raw Impressions. Hello, everyone. I am Tim Huff. You are listening to the Raw Impressions podcast. You are Raw Impressions listeners. If you're listening, that's you. Welcome. I am Tim Hoff. Some of you may remember me from Raw Impressions episode number 91. I am the USA's leading recreational respiration regulating expert. Always here to help you huff, puff, and blow your life out. Like, like candles, like too many candles on a birthday cake, you're living longer, your lungs are healthier, and I'm helping, (laughs) and I'll be back to help. In the meantime, Lou and Adele are feeling a little under the weather. They are respiratorily challenged. (laughs) Conveniently enough, or inconveniently for them, I'm sorry, you two, you're not feeling well. Oh. I am going to insert a little trigger (laughs) warning for our our beloved listeners that there will be a lot of, there could be some coughing. (laughs) Just the sound of mucus filling, filling a a Vicks scented tissue. (laughs) Hey, I am Tim Buff. I will be back. Take it away, Lou and Adele. Thanks, Tim. Perfect timing. I just coughed right through that intro. I cannot believe I'm sitting in this chair and I'm wearing hard pants. Adele has been in soft pants for days. She has been really, really sick, like not getting out of bed kind of sick. Yeah. Like I was, I've been doing the meals, Mm -hmm. shuttling the kids to and fro, making Izzy's lunch, which is very complicated, by the way. Do do you appreciate what I do? I do. Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't, I don't know if I needed a new appreciation of it because I just a hundred percent totally appreciate all of the things that you do for the family and myself, but wow, work is never done when you're, when you're like behind the scenes running the house and just trying to keep things from like being like kind of gross and just too much and feeling you got to do constant maintenance. Yes. Constantly, you know, wiping down the counters getting the fucking dish, dishes out of the sink mm-hmm. and then getting them out of the fucking rack too. I know. Get them out of the fucking rack and into the fucking cupboards. Yes. All day long. All day long. And taking out the recycling and taking out the trash. And, um, you know, I have loads of laundry sitting, waiting to be folded, washed, put away. Yeah. I haven't, even, I haven't even dipped a toe into the laundry maintenance. <sighs> So I've been. I've Izzy been, um, needs jammies. It's getting dark. I need underwear. I, I need soft pants. I, I have not. Izzy needs somebody yeah. to put her to. You know, she needs someone to, to put her, her to bed because I can't be in bed with her right Izzy now. Izzy needs somebody to just chat with at mm-hmm, night. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and the yeah. boy's going to and fro. Yeah, he's been. He's so busy. He's a teenager, so thankfully he's way yeah, he's more independent I'm now. Like, he was Few, not this, right? He was not this busy this time last year. No, I know. He was. He was kind of looking at me as like, "Hey, what entertain are we doing me. now? Entertain me, Dad." <laughs> now he's totally like he's his whole life is entertaining him. I know he has a whole rich, whole rich life over yeah. there at the high school. Yeah, it's really cool. He's really kind of. He's that's I'm, cool. Deeply grateful to have a independent teenager in the house and an eight year old who's being really, really understanding of mommy being sick. She is being reasonable, so reasonable. And uh, I'll be honest, I straight up have not been this sick for a year. Like I had COVID, I think a year ago, almost exactly at this time. And I haven't seen you this sick yeah, for successive days in a long, long time. I don't know when yeah. I've seen it because usually you, if you're and really you, sick, and you weren't there for when I had COVID. I wasn't there for the COVID. So I, you know, God, I don't even know how I did that by myself because um, you were, had to leave for tour, and I, 
it was insane. I, I don't even know how that happened. Like, how did I even feed Izzy? I have no idea. I had a mask on. I was like, I, I was, I had a really bad experience with it. And I mean, this is like, I, I don't know, it almost felt worse, to be perfectly honest. I have a sinus infection. And that might not sound like much, but it's actually like been completely debilitating. I was when I say bedridden for almost four days, it was truly bedridden. I couldn't get out of bed to just I had to just go to the bathroom and that was it and come back. And even that was very unsteady for me. It was hard, incredibly weak. I've had no appetite. I had a fever on and off for a few days. I mean, it was like, so listless. You know, it was really I was hard. Worried. You were so weak. I was worried. Yeah. I was like, I'm like weak. That doesn't, that doesn't sound good. Right. Like I, when someone says, I feel so weak. You're yeah. Like, you, you go, okay. Yeah. Feeling weak is. I know. Hmm. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, here's Tim. Hey, we're both going to take a sip. Okay. This is my least favorite guest okay. of ours. Tim? Yeah. Oh. I can explain later, but... Okay. Is that your mango juice? Mmm. So fucking good. You're on such a mango kick. Hey, mm. Tim Huff, I'm back. <laughs> now, what does everybody not get enough of? Sleep. Nobody gets enough sleep. I'm telling you, this is bad. But guess what? I have a wholly original method to get you to sleep easily. Huff, puff, and blow yourself to sleep. Here's the deal. Now, you're lying in bed, staring at the ceiling. Number one, shut your eyes. Shut those eyes. <laughs> now, lying on your back, breathe in. A shallow breath in through your nose. <coughs> You're sipping the air with your nostrils. Breathe in for five counts. Like you have five fingers. <laughs> now think of each one of your fingers as you inhale, ever so slightly sipping the air with your nose. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. And now hold for eight seconds. Eight seconds of holding your breath, defying your body, which is desperate to breathe. Defy your body and float into space for eight seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. And now exhale. Exhale. Push it out consistently, <laughs> slowly, over a period of nine seconds. Push it out. Ready? Push. One, two, three, four, five, Push. six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> and then we begin the process again. Sipping the air with your nose for five. Holding defying nature for eight then pushing it out slowly, steadily over nine this is my wholly original method for putting yourself to sleep do this between five and fifty-five times and soon <coughs> soon you will be asleep, and you'll have the sleep that you so richly deserve that you can barely live without. Huff, puff, and blow yourself to sleep. Five, eight, nine. Again, <laughs> it's not original because it's the it's that thing that's so common. I saw this, you know, like when you're filling up the gas, your mm -hmm. car gas. You know, and then... To car gas, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> car gas. <laughs> the thing we drive around. Yeah. Car gas, which is actually the same as lawnmower gas. Motorcycle gas. Uh, Molotov cocktail gas. 
It's all the same. Great. Yeah. Um, no, you know, like there's places where you where you're fueling. And then, like, a little screen pops on and shows you commercials. Yeah. I saw, like, a little, like, wellness commercial on a gas pump that suggested mm. the same breathing method. But the thing is, it's four, seven, eight. Four in, mm-hmm. hold for seven, seven and then eight, eight out, out, and a whoosh. <laughs> I saw that on a fucking... So, that's wow. not... That is not his original People are thing. struggling. They need help. That's what that tells me. Well, you know, I... I do employ that. Yeah. Pretty often. I can barely breathe in and out a full breath right now because mm. of the cough. Um, so, sorry, Tim. I can't take your advice right now. And I am having the worst, hardest nights right now. Like, I can't sleep because I'm coughing all night from the psychotic post nasal drip nightmare that is my life currently so and i'm wearing i'm wearing an earplug as you should you should be wearing fucking gun muffs i it's truly I can't sleep with gun muffs maybe on. you could if you just slept on your back you know like in a little mummy position with your gun muffs on it's an interesting image i, I do know. like i do i yeah. do like the image just kind of, of like get real calm like cross your arms then just lay there and <laughs> i thought i had the flu or something because it the the fatigue was so extreme, the weakness, the lack of appetite, the fever on and off. Um, it was just horrible. But I should have known my sneaky old friend, uh, the, 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 the pressure that was happening in my head was so familiar, but it was in addition to all of these other symptoms. Your shitty friend, the nasal infection. Yeah. So and they come around. You know, every once in a while, a couple times a year, sometimes. That's the thing is, Raw Impressions listeners, if you Fuck have been here before, that thing, you may have recalled, especially in the first year of the podcast, mm. I think I had... <coughs> so sorry. Um, multiple, multiple... Uh, sinus infections during that year. And I mean, it was, it it felt so endless. I have been (coughs) 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 You have to edit out some of these coughs. Hold on, I have to have a sip of tea. It affects my life for like not just like a week, but like sometimes months at a time where I feel unwell. And um, I have done so many things and so many doctor appointments to figure out why and what is wrong with me and what's going on. Um, I But I had this like lucky streak for about a year of not having a sinus infection, which is very unusual for me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but now I have one again. So anyway, it was confusing to me that I had all these other like symptoms with it because typically, yes, I have the raging pressure pain where I can't breathe, the congestion, then the post nasal drip, and then the cough, anything like that feels for me, totally overwhelming. I was starting to have like this, I don't know if it was like some I don't want to use the word like psychic break in there, but like I was not feeling well while I was waiting between the nurse and the doctor. It was long. I was texting Lou. I was having to lay down on the bed in there over and over again because I was getting incredibly just tired and fatigued. And and then finally she comes back in. The plastic gown is gone. She's on to just one little mask. And she's like, yeah, it's your old friend's sinus infection, but this one's bad. I'm like... Okay, so it's my sinus infection. I'm on now. My albuterol inhaler is back, which I haven't used yet because I find that when I mix that with the prednisone, zoom. Yeah, I it's too much. I'm, cra- a, I'm crazy. My heart's like palp. That's you know, some speed. Not doing well, and I I don't like speed, guys. That would not be my drug. That would not be my street drug. Okay, mm. no. Speed's not for me. So I'm on prednisone and antibiotics, of course. And uh, the beast is coming out, right? The cough, the gunk, the The things. 
just all draining. And I will say I've gotten some really great additional tips from people on this journey. And one recently was uh, to get a neti pot. And, you know, um, I'm going to really try to incorporate that maybe even in my like kind of day-to-day life, just doing a neti pot um, as preventative measures. Honey, could you give me those tissues over there? And um, I forgot that taking spoonfuls of honey really help coat your throat. So that is another thing I'm doing. I've had, what, like four or five now massive bloody noses. I have, don't worry, I've got the humidifier. and Everything's happening that needs to be happening. But drinking the fluids. In the midst of all of this crazy illness that I'm working through, we <laughs> we adopted our kittens right before I went down. Like literally the day, like the afternoon before I went down. So I think our kittens, <laughs> think I like live in that bedroom, like in that bed, which I hope that doesn't ruin them. I hope they're not like confused then and they go like, why? Or get like weirdly overly I think it's attached. Perfect. But it's perfect because they've, they had a hum- they've had the, during the transitional period between coming yeah, from the shelter. From their mom. From their mama because mm-hmm. they went up for adoption like when we got there, basically, they had just they had just entered the shelter that morning. That morning, and we yes. we had them we had them on the way home by one thirty that afternoon. Yes, it was so incredible. They, and we were the first ones at the fucking clinic. Yes, the Dakin Animal the, Shelter the, in Springfield. The animal Shelter. Mm-hmm. We were the first ones there, and thank God because we had the pick of the fucking litter. We literally did. Literally, <laughs> literally the pick of the litter. And we oh, got ourselves man. two fucking rocking, rocking little boy brothers. They are the best little dudes. And they've, it's good that they're hanging out with you because it's actually acclimated them really well. We can pick them up. They're like, they didn't hide under the bed for a week. No, I they know. They were like out and in our arms almost, in, you know, within like right away, pretty much. Literally right away. I mean. So, and then what is, I mean, what is so better? They're so curious. What is, what is better than watching kittens? Oh my God. I mean. Kitten medicine is just, it's been, yeah. thank God for kittens. <laughs> thank God for kittens. Like it's, it's yeah. really, really, it just, it hits, a, it scratches an itch, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> scratches my little throat itch. Oh boy. Um, I know. I so love them kittens. So you've been watching kittens. You, you, you did get, you've, you've had four to five days of like some pretty solid, yeah, you know, tell that, tell our listeners a little bit more about our kittens, who they are. Kitten time comes in Their your names. life, and it goes. We have Psycho Candy, which is a little tuxedo cat. We named the cat before we met it, but we were just like, we're going to stick with this because we love Psycho Candy, the album by Jesus and Mary Chain. Yeah. And then the other cat was going to be named by Izzy, mm-hmm. and she came up with the name Pumpkin. Mm-hmm. So we thought maybe that was going to change when we were driving home from the shelter. But then we got home and hung out with the cats a little while and we're like, eh, Psycho Candy and Pumpkin. Why not? It's October. Um, Halloween is right around the corner. Yeah. Um, And the names kind of feel good. They fit. It's okay. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, but you've been watching these kittens. They grow. Like within the last five, they've been like, we got, and we, Adele like got all, all the cat stuff. Like there's like, Mm. couple of scratchers in the room there's these things these donuts that they crawl in and yeah. got little holes in it. it's like so they're they're, going ho- crazy. they're hooked up you know they're, they're in our up. bedroom right now we have a bedroom yep. we, we you know what i've read is that you're supposed to slowly introduce kittens to your whole home because it's overwhelming for them you know and we'll be honest we live in a big old house you know here in greenfield and it's like it's a lot of space and Lou and I have a lot of shit. Okay. And we both work from home and not exactly like kitty conducive rooms. You know, we've got some spaces that like need to be shut away from, from that cat life anyway. And so I'm trying to be a really good kitten mama and I did a lot of research and I'm feeling like really good about that. So I would say if anyone out there is thinking about get kit, getting kittens or adding them to their life, I'm feeling really good about my decision, which was to not be spontaneous and just decide like, I want kittens, I'm going to go to the shelter and get them. Like, I prepared. It took almost a month of me slowly because it's also expensive, you know, like, 
you can't just I mean, most people we couldn't like just drop all of the money immediately to go get every little thing, you know, like even litter box, litter, food, um, all that shit, you know, it adds up. Plus the cost of adopting the kittens, you know, which is, it's, you know, it's quite significant. You want to, but it's important. So, oh, is Tim back? <laughs> We're going to have to let Tim just. Yeah. Is he, is he going to try and tell me to stop talking? And that concludes another <laughs> episode of okay. Raw Impressions with Lou Barlow and Adele Barlow. Adele with two L's. I'm Tim Hoff, and it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> well, I'll just finish what Fraud. I'm saying, Tim. You, Tim. Is that I recommend um, planning and then making your space ready for kittens. You prepared, as you usually do, for almost everything. And it's really... But only today, only today did they start clawing, clawing their way up on clawing their way up your shirts like yeah. she's got a bunch of shirts hanging out here in the room and the heck the cats are starting they're getting destructive psycho candy was swinging from a silk blouse and i was like no that's yeah uh-uh crazy psycho um not so candy stop could be a harbinger it. I don't know. I'm so be, I'm a little nervous about him H- hitting be, the, the the full Barlow Manor. You know, it's there's uh, going to be just some some destruction. I know. I'm worried. I'm like, what's going to go down? Shit. They have an appetite. They're hungry. So hungry. Mm. These little kittens. For destruction. Oh God. <laughs> they are so fucking cute, though, and they are so fucking cute, and their little faces, and oh my God, oh my God, and they let me touch them, and they let me pet them, and then they purr, and then. Oh. It brings you into the oh my the God. animal. It brings you into the world family watching those things. It's incredible. And last night when you were putting Izzy to bed, the animal family. they curled up together in a little yin yang on your pillow right next to my head and just looked at me. And I was like, "Dear God, it, it was just it just they just keep it's ridiculous. It. They just keep pumping it up. And they were so smart." I didn't have to. I didn't have to do anything. There was no training involved. We literally came home, unzipped the cat carrier because they shared one. They came home in one because they're bros. They came out. They used the litter box. Done. That's their litter box. They haven't shit or peed anywhere else. Not once. They're like, that's the bathroom. Obviously, mm-hmm. crazy. Yep. Because I've read people go like, oh my my kittens are peeing here. Or doing no, none of that. They went immediately to every single specific cat toy, scratching post, cat tree. They really hang out together, too. The two of them are yes, like... Yes, they like, do everything together. They fight. Mm-hmm. They lick each other's assholes. Mm. That was a real surprise for me. Yeah, I, was, I didn't know that they rimmed each other. That was like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, Pumpkin went to town on Psycho Candy's <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I just and like the thing was what I was I was looking at pumpkin <laughs> while that was happening and I'm like you know oh my God. kind of expecting that his eyes should be like rolling back in his head kind of thing but he was just kind of looking forward like he I mean he was nonplussed which is you know I don't really understand I can't although I mean cat tongues are a little I mean but regardless <laughs> <laughs> regardless <laughs> they're very close brothers let's just say that they um. Yeah, they they get right down to the from the butt to the ear to the body to the yep. they they shit together they play together they eat together they roughhouse so fucking hard, but then they they stop and the next thing you know they're like a cuddle puddle of love and they never hurt each other you know they they roughhouse hard but like are they gonna actually hurt each other that's the thing that kind of freaks there's, me out. There's something that I I didn't want you to look up. What. Will cats kill each other? Like, will sibling cats kill each other? Oh, God. Will they? I don't know. Oh. You'd have to re- have a real psycho fucking... Can you imagine that? If you had, like, this... this I don't psychopath think they're cat that. that I... Like, that, that killed its own siblings. Okay, so this is not a cat, but my Uncle Bud and my Aunt Roxanne out in Wisconsin... Mm-hmm. Okay, we're talking back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. This is... <laughs> Uncle Bud, not Roxy, they always had um, pairs of Dobermans and they would like kind of go through them fairly quickly because I, I don't know, guys, it was crazy, but 
they were always called Squirt and Seven Up or something like that for a while. And then they were also Hansel and Gretel. Anyway, one time one like kind of like ate the other one, like killed it and like mauled it. Took it down. Yikes. So, alrighty. I have to wrap it up, y'all, because um, I'm going down real quickly here. And um, that's the that's the skinny on what's been happening over here. No thanks to Tim Huff. For I, his... I, I, I don't even know what happened. He was, like, was he here? I don't know. See, I have like not a good... selective hearing right now because I'm so congested. Not a good segment. <laughs> not a good segment. <laughs> it's okay. Not a good segment. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>